When there's defensiveness, there is no communication. And defensiveness is really like a, a block of energy. It's like a block in the energy system. It's a wall of energy that says, you know, stay away from me. We're not going to work this out. So you can use EFT in that way to, um, to really calm yourself down so you can enter an exchange. You're always responsible for your half of any relationship conflict. It's never just about the other person. And so anything you can do to get yourself balanced and sane again is going to really benefit the relationship. And EFT can help you to do that. So I remember one time I was dealing with the CEO of a company and we were having a private conversation. This was a friend of a colleague's who had been referred to me. Uh, he was having a really tough time uh, at, in his job and in his life. And this mutual friend suggested that he give me a call and that we have some kind of a coaching conversation. And during the conversation, it was really clear to me that the CEO was depressed. Um, and probably, you know, I'm not a therapist, and but I've had a lot of training, both as a coach and a lot of supervision by therapists. And I knew the signs of depression. And it was really clear to me that that's what this gentleman was dealing with. And um, while I made recommendations for uh, um, where he could get help, where he could get therapeutic help, I made a referral. The problem during the phone call was that he was about to go into a very important board meeting and he was feeling panicky and really, really out of sorts. And so in a last ditch effort to support him, I remember saying to him, and I remember thinking, okay, he's gonna think I'm nuts, but, and I said, look, I have this little technique I can teach you. I know you're gonna, you may think it's crazy, but trust me, let's just try it and let's see what happens. And so I did EFT with him, you know, walked him through, and he, the poor guy was desperate enough. He said, I'll do anything at this point. Walked him through the process, and instantly, after the first round, I could tell something shifted. He was feeling better. And after about three or four rounds, he said to me, I can't believe it. I feel fine. And I feel totally confident that I can go into this meeting. And so I said, great. And a week later, he called me, and he said, I don't know what happened on the phone, but I haven't felt the same way since that call. And this man never, I mean, it's like his depression and his anxiety lifted within, I mean, I was amazed, within just five minutes of being on the phone. It wasn't even a formal, you know, let's kind of go, it was just a let me see if I can help you in this really difficult situation. And it just completely took away his depression. Now, I don't think that's a common occurrence. I say that because, again, I want to be responsible about the fact that there are a lot of people watching this who, are suffering from depression or anxiety and if anything it can help to you know decrease some of the symptoms and for some people it is a mir miracle cure for this gentleman it was in those moments where I am tapping all of a sudden a thought will occur to me that seemingly had nothing to do with the original problem um, never even you know it wasn't anything I had identified as part of the original problem. And suddenly this thought will pop into my head and it ends up being the exact reason why I'm frightened or blocked or unable to move forward. And to me, that is a moment of grace. That's how our working with the body's energy system and the greater oneness, the greater energy system begin to dance together. We start to have, we gain access to wisdom and insight. That's the interesting thing. You see, in this day and age, so many of us are overusing the left brain, analytical parts of our brains. We're always, you know, busy, rushing from one appointment to another, working too hard, trying to make a career out of getting our to-do list completed. We don't give ourselves enough time to let the right brain take over and enter into a more creative, um, relaxed mindset where we access wisdom and insight. The great thing about EFT is when you start doing the tapping, you give yourself instant access to wisdom and insight. When that happens, when those memories or those thoughts, those the pieces of wisdom or insight that occur to us while we're tapping, when they rise to the surface and we become aware of them, it opens the door for healing. It opens the door for self-love. And that's the key to everything. Somewhere deep inside, I believe that the root of all illness and the root of all emotional distress is an inability to love ourselves, an inability to fully embrace who we are an inability to fully accept who we are. That's when we create an opening that allows grace to work its magic in our life. Um, I always tell people when they're doing the tapping to pay attention to any thoughts or memories or words that, or images or feelings that come up for you while you're tapping because they often hold clues as to what's really going on. Working with someone using the tapping therapy is really a client-driven process. They're the ones that are coming up with the truth about you know, what their experience is and what's going on.
I know I don't have to say anything out loud. As a matter of fact, now I can be in a situation where if I'm upset about something, let's say I'm in a meeting and there's something happening and I get my buttons pushed and I'm, I'm upset about it, I can literally just close my eyes or even not close my eyes and imagine myself tapping, you know, using the setup phrase and tapping the points that I need to tap. And it works just as well as speaking out loud and tapping the actual points. What's really important is to be willing to work to get to the root cause of what's going on. And that generally comes up as a thought, you know, a, a memory, an idea, an image, or, you know, something that's generated from within. What matters is that the person doing the tapping has a true experience, you know, that they, they speak the truth, they, they stay connected to what they're feeling or what they're thinking or what occurs to them and that they really stay with it long enough to, uh, you know, if you tap and it doesn't feel like anything's been relieved, tap again and notice what occurs to you and then tap on that and, you know, keep working through the layers. And sometimes there's a lot of layers to work through and you need to do that over time. If something comes up that you don't want to say out loud or you don't want to own or you don't want to say you, you accept about yourself, that's the very thing you want to tap about because that's the good news is that's leading you right to why you're stuck. And that's leading you, it's shining a light on the place that needs your love and your compassion and your self-acceptance more than anything else. And the quicker you can get there and give yourself that, the quicker you're going to dissolve that block and get on with your life.